welcome to EC Electronics. This is the part 2 of ISRO exam preparation. That is, we are preparing for ISRO scientist electronics post. Okay, so uh, this is the part 2 video and we are going to see another questions. There has been asked in the previous ISRO exams. This is the effective resistance faced by the voltage source is dash. So there is a network given. And this uh, network we have to solve and we have to find the effective resistance which is faced by this voltage source. Now the options given are 4 ohm, 12 ohm, 3 ohm and 16 ohm. Okay, so this is a question from network analysis. So uh, in network analysis, we have studied about the series connection and parallel connection of resistors. And we have, uh, we have also studied how the voltage and the current get divided in whether in series or in parallel connection. Okay. So, uh, if you don't know anything about uh, the connections or uh, series and parallel connections, let me just tell you that when the resistors are connected in series, what happens is that the voltage will get separated. That is, the voltage will be divided for each resistors and the current will be same for all the resistors connected in series. And in case of parallel connection, the reverse will happen. The, that is the voltage will remain same for all the parallel branches, whereas the current will get separated. So for this question, if you see the current here is I, right? So this I, when it is coming into the parallel connection, the current will get separated or the current will get divided. That is the current division will happen. So here I by 4 portion of the current is divided and it is flowing through this branch. So I minus I by 4 is 3 I by 4, right? So the 3 I by 4, which is the remaining portion of the current, will have to flow through this branch. So since there is only two branches, the current flowing through this branch is 3 I by 4, whereas the current flowing through this branch is already given in the question, which is I by 4. That is the current division rule. Whereas what happens is that the voltage across this branch or this uh, path will be equal to the voltage across this path since it is a parallel connection. So you have to know this thing that the voltage is same and the current gets divided. I'm talking about what type of connection? Parallel connection. Now, you, you, you don't need to actually uh, by heart all the connections. If you know this connection, that is, this thing will happen in parallel connection means the opposite will happen in the series connection. So, in series connection, what will happen? In series means the current is same and the voltage gets divided. Or the voltage will be different for different resistors. Okay, going to Ohm's law, what is the voltage across this branch? It is current I by 4 into resistor value that is R and for this branch it is 3 I by 4 into 4. The value of the resistor is given, right? 4. So you can divide, uh, I mean eliminate these 4 and 4 and you will get and you can eliminate this I and I also. You will get R equal to 3 into 4 which is equal to 12 ohm. Now you have your R value here. And this R value is connected in parallel with your 4 ohm resistor. Now you can replace this R with 12. Because you have already found the R value as 12. You can uh, write it here. And these two resistors are connected in which connection? It is in parallel connection. So 12 is parallel connection in parallel connected to the 4 resistor that is the resistor with 4 value. So what will be the equivalent resistance? So R equivalent equal to 12 into 4 by 12 plus 4 which is equal to 12 into 4 by 16. 4 4 are 16. 4 3 are 12. So your value of equivalent resistance is 3 ohm, right? So this is your answer for this question. That is the equivalent resistance faced by the voltage source is 3 ohm. So the correct answer for this question is option C. The next question which we are going to discuss is from electromagnetic theory or EMT. So the question is, if the reflected wave at the load of our transmission line is 
20 dB below the incident wave, the SWR at the load is what? A, 15, B, 1.22, C, 3, D, 40. Now, in order to answer this question, you need to have an idea about voltage standing wave ratio or generally in standing wave ratio, about standing wave ratio. Okay, uh, so I have done a detailed video on standing wave ratio and how to plot that standing wave ratio onto Smith's chart. So if you are not familiar with the topic, please do watch that video. Okay, so here uh, we have to find the standing wave ratio. So for the standing wave ratio or the voltage standing wave ratio, you need to know one thing. The equation for finding the voltage standing wave ratio is V reflected by VI. Okay, that is V reflected is the reflected wave or the reflected voltage. VI is the incident voltage. Then this is the voltage standing wave ratio. Also, it can be written as minus 20 log 10 mode reflection coefficient tau. So, you can write the VSWR as 1 plus mode tau by 1 minus mode tau. Whereas this tau is again your reflection coefficient. Now it is given that the reflected wave is minus 20 dB or sorry 20 dB down that of incident wave means you can write this value as that is VR by VI can be written as minus 20 dB because it is 20 dB down means minus 20 dB. Okay so for that I am going to remove this and I will write VR by VI equal to minus 20 log 10 mod tau equal to minus 20 dB or minus 20 since it is given that it is 20 dB down. So from this I can find my tau right. If you take the anti logarithm you will get your tau as 0.1. So this is your tau value. Now you have to find the SWR. Now we have already uh, discussed about the equation that is VSWR equal to or SWR equal to 1 plus 1 plus mod tau by 1 minus mod tau right. So that is equal to the tau value is 0 0.1. So 1 plus 0 0.1 by 1 minus 0 0.1 okay. So that is 1.1 by 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9. If you solve this fraction that is 1.1 by 0 0.9, the answer obtaining is, I'll write it here, 1.22. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is option B, that is 1.22 is your correct answer. So in order to answer this question, you need to just know the equation for finding the SWR. Okay, so the relation between the SWR and the reflection coefficient is given as 1 plus mod tau by 1 minus mod tau where tau is your reflection coefficient and this is your standing wave ratio or voltage standing wave ratio. Okay, so the answer for this question is option B that is 1.22. The next question which we are going to discuss is from the operational amplifier session and the question is this. The circuit is with an ideal op-amp or operational amplifier with plus or minus V supply. The output voltage is what you have to find. You have to solve this operation amplifier circuit and you have to find the output voltage. Option A minus 200 millivolt. Option B minus 400 millivolt. Option C minus 600 millivolt and option D minus 300 millivolt. You have to find. So you don't know uh, about anything about the voltages given at the input or anything. You just have a uh, circuit connected here and with an operational amplifier. So you have to solve for the output voltage, right? So for this, we have to assume a virtual short circuit at the input of the operational amplifier. So there are two terminals, right? There is a negative, that is an inverting terminal and a non-inverting terminal. I'm going to take the voltage at the inverting terminal as VB and at the non-inverting terminal as VA. And I'm going to assume a virtual short circuit in this inputs. That is, I'm going to assume that VA equal to VB equal to zero. Okay. Now, I'm going to perform a nodal analysis for my node VB. 
that is for this node I am going to perform a nodal analysis here and I also know that for an ideal operational amplifier there is no current drawn to the input right so the current is equal to total current drawn to the input is equal to zero so these two things you have to keep in mind and I am going to perform a nodal analysis for my node for this particular node so I can write that so this node is having a voltage of VB so VB minus for this branch there is a voltage of minus 40 millivolt right so minus 40 millivolt by the resistor value 2k plus now for this branch vb minus the voltage coming is 20 so 20 millivolt by 1k is the resistance for that branch plus vb minus the voltage is V out. V out by the resistor value connected is 10K, right? So 10 equal to 0. So this is the sum of all currents, right? And we know that for an ideal operational amplifier, the sum of currents or the current drawn to the input is equal to 0. So this will be equal to 0. And also we know one thing that the VB here we have assumed as 0 because we have taken that the there is a virtual short circuit at the input. So we can remove this VB or VB is equal to 0. Now we have this equation with only V out or V0 and if you solve this equation you will get your answer. So this is 10k. What I will do is I will remove all the k values from the denominator that is this k, this k and this k I can remove. So I will get minus 40 by 2 minus 20 by 1 and minus V out by 10. So I can write it as minus 40 by 2 is minus 20 right. So minus 20 minus 20 again minus v0 by 10 equal to 0 minus 20 and minus 20 is minus 40 right so i can remove this and write minus 40 so minus 40 equal to uh, sorry minus 40 minus v out by 10 equal to 0 so i'll take this v out by 10 to the other side so minus 40 equal to v out by 10 or you can write V out equal to minus 40 into 10 that is minus 400 and these values are given in millivolt right so it is millivolt minus 400 millivolt is your V out value. Okay so in order to solve such operational amplifier questions you have to either perform nodal analysis at the input nodes and you have to sometimes assume that there is a short circuit uh, in the input and you always have to keep this thing in mind that the input current drawn to the inputs of an ideal operational amplifier is zero and thus you can equate uh, this nodal equations to zero and you can uh, perform the nodal analysis and thus you can find the output voltage. So these are the questions which I have included in this video and we will be doing more such videos for ISRO exam preparation and we will be doing the previous year questions which have been asked in the previous year ISRO exams. I really hope that you found the video useful for your preparation and if you want to prepare for GATE exams, ISRO, RRB or UPSC exams, please do subscribe to the channel and also if you like the videos, please don't forget to give the videos a thumbs up. Okay, so thanks for watching and keep on watching.